We always knew that at some point this transfer window, it was going to crank up with activity for Manchester United. It looks like this week is that week. We're here talking about Frankie de Jong. We're here talking about how he's going to be an incredible new signing for Manchester United. No one's talking about Tyrrell Malassia. Neither was Fabrizio Romano, really. Not to Manchester United until this afternoon. But apparently Manchester United are hijacking the deal for the 22-year-old final left back who was on his way to Leon, maybe not anymore with further reports coming from Voigt Bull International. Now that Manchester United have already agreed the transfer with Feyenoord in a deal late last night. Let's, I'll run through everything for you. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. I'll try and bring you the updates as and when they happen. But Tyrrell Malassia, this was only a couple of days ago that Fabrizio Romano was reporting this deal completed for Malassia to join Leon. Now, for a lot of United fans, that was a bit of a frustrating situation. Someone like Malassia who could come in and offer real competition left back for Luke Shaw. Real competition. Very cheap. 15 million. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere this afternoon, boom, we get a bit of this from Fabrizio Romano. Manchester United are trying to hack the Terrell Malassia deal after a full agreement, full verbal agreement was agreed with Leon. Man United jumped into it before it was signed. Talks with final to reach an agreement. Dutch sources confirm and detail. This is an interesting one. Malassia has got the same agents as Frankie de Jong. We go over here to Martin Krabendam, which has to be one of the best Dutch names I've heard in a while. He's saying this, that final reached an agreement with Manchester United last night. Now it's up to the player to get out. With that, they hijacked the deal to Leon. So actually going a step further than what Fabrizio is saying. But Martin Krabendam, as I said, who writes for Voitbol International out in Holland, is saying that Manchester United last night swooped in last minute from deep, went there and agreed a deal with Feyenoord for Malassia. Now, you'll know full well this is not the first time that we have been linked with, it, been linked with this player. Sorry. So it won't come as too much of a surprise to see what's happening. Going back to April, his his name came up saying that Eric Ten Hag was looking to sign some sort of competition for a bit for a bit of competition to Luke Shaw, I suppose, in the same way that Alex Telles. By the way, this absolutely nullifies Alex Telles. If he comes in, I would hope that Alex Telles would be leaving. For sure, there's no point keeping him in. Uh, this is what was saying by Mike Vavage, who we know from the Telegraph, saying left back Tiro Malassia is a target for Eric Ten Hag and is on his list, but we know full well that uh, Frankie de Jong was the priority. And then we're talking about Anthony after that. We go one step further. Uh, and Steve, uh, Simon Mullock, I think, he was saying that Eric Ten Hag wants top-class competition for Luke Shaw. But the belief in Holland is that United are so concentrated on making de Jong the first signing that Leon has sensed the opportunity. And that's where this story came from. Deal, they did. They, they swooped in. They got the deal verbally agreed. 15 million euros fee. That is a very, de <laughs> very decent price. We don't make those sorts of signings. We really don't make those sorts of signings. And for, for those who don't really understand who Tiro Malassi is, as I said, he is a 22-year-old left-back from Feyenoord and somebody who would come straight into this Manchester United team squad and offer immediate competition for Luke Shaw. If you look at his career today, he's 22, but look at that, over 108, 180 appearances at left-back, one at left midfield and three at right-back. He is a left-back. That is absolutely certain. But I'll tell you what, that would mean immediate competition for Luke Shaw. And let's be completely honest, given how Luke Shaw played last season, he needs that competition. We thought that we, we saw what happened when Alex Tellez came in and the sort of resurgence that gave to Luke Shaw. Is this the same thing going on here? Or is this just Luke Shaw being eased out of the football club? You can let me know what you think about that. Uh, one thing I suppose I would be slightly disappointed about is that what would that mean for Alvaro Fernandez? He's uh, one of those players that I've actually backed to really sort of come through into this squad in the preseason, certainly take his opportunity and maybe force himself into first team contention. But if we go now and we sign Tyrrell Malassia, well, Tyrrell Malassia, Tyrrell Malassia, how do I pronounce his name? Tyrrell, Tyrell? Let's go Tyrell. I might've been doing that the whole wrong the whole time. But yeah, this is a bit of a surprise, bit of a curveball, a bit like, you know, like sometimes they say London buses two come at once. We're here talking about De Jong and we've known full well and we've hoped, I suppose, more than known, We've hoped that it's going to be a domino effect. The once the De Jong complications are out of the way that Manchester United can start flexing and start moving. Now it looks like United have gone back in. Not that we weren't in for Malassia, but we, as I said, we were so focused on De Jong that we allowed Leon to go and do that. But this afternoon, Fabrizio, they're confirming that Manchester United are trying to hijack the deal. Despite the fact that the full agreement was there for, with Leon, and they'll be fuming, absolutely fuming if this happens. Man United are going into it. 
He's saying, I do find it interesting the fact that he's got the same agents as De Jong. We can just continue that conversation. Now that we've got Frankie sorted, how about Tyrell? Tyrell, how about Malassia? Let's talk about him instead. But sources out in Holland going a step further than Fabrizio Romano saying that not only are Manchester United trying to hijack the deal for him, but that Manchester United have actually reached that agreement. Nice. United actually moving fast. And as I, can, as, as I said, we're running through this. And what do you think about left back? Because left back, the full back positions at Manchester United are a problem. Are an absolute problem. Luke Shaw at left back. Aaron Wan-Bissaka or Diogo Delo at right back. They are problems. But I didn't personally feel that we had enough money this summer to go out and spend what we needed to spend to sign reinforcements. That's why I personally thought that we would be looking inwards. I thought we'll be looking at players like Alvaro Fernandez at left back and probably Ethan Laird at right back as two options who can come in and sort of offer that competition that would hopefully either make Luke Shaw better or simply, he would just supersede Luke Shaw. And you'll notice, honestly, and I'm not doing this on purpose, but I'm, just re I'm not really mentioning Alex Tellez's name at all. I think si he's been such a disappointing signing since he arrived from Porto. He really has. I thought we were signing that Champions League, established quality. I thought he was going to whip the balls into Cavani, scoring that left. No chance. Alex Tellez, if he comes, if Tiro Manassia comes in, Alex Tellez should be sold. Simple as that. Because then you've got three potential options. You, you would have, for example, you'd have Shaw, you'd have Malassia, and you would have Fernandez. That's excellent strength, not strength in depth, but you can, you can see something happening there. Either Luke Shaw is going to improve and get back to that sort of form that saw him. I think, was he named in the Euro team in the tournament? I think he was. Anyway, he was great for United that year as well. And if it's not Luke Shaw, then it might be Malassia coming through. And if it's not Malassia coming through, it's going to be Fernandez. That sort of healthy competition is needed in every single position at Manchester United. Now, what about right back? We were linked with, uh, tentatively linked with Jed Spence from Nottingham Forest. Looks like he's going to be going to, towards Spurs. But United, we need, with the Frankie de Jong deal, I haven't done a video on that this afternoon. There's more talk about uh, breakthroughs, but nothing really that's an update on what I'd already told you from the weekend, from Ian Whittle, from the Telegraph. That the deal, 65 million euros, that's the, that's the fee. It seems like that's going to be the upfront fee done. That's good. <laughs> that's pretty damn reasonable. Fee. More than reasonable, I think. It's actually a very good fee for a player of Frankie de Jong's quality. Yeah, it's just, that's great. And then it's going to be the add-ons that are going to be delaying it. But yeah, that, that part is definitely interesting. The fact that Malassia has the same agent as de Jong, that will probably give United a bit of an edge. But we didn't, I mean, we kind of need more than an edge. Leon had already agreed with it. I suppose it depends what Malassia wants to do. At Leon, he'd probably be far more likely to go through and be, I don't know, be, be someone who starts regularly than at Manchester United. If he comes to Manchester United, he would, have, he would effectively have to come in straight away and fight for his place. But what, what do you think about this, this news? The idea that we're going in for uh, Tyrell. <laughs> I don't know whether it's Tyrell or Tyrell. I'm going to switch it to Tyrell. Malassia. The sorts of signings that United haven't really made for a long time, I don't particularly think. You could try and put Tellers in that category if you want. But he's someone who's more old and established. He's 22. As I said, if we, if we were to quickly head over here and head back and take a look at his, um, his career to date so far, he's a left-back, pure and utter left-back. I'll have to do a scout report. I'll look into a bit more depth in terms of understanding his overall game because that'll be interesting. You know, How is he going forward? Is he somebody who's going to go on the, on the overlap? Is he somebody who's more likely to cross or cut inside? What sort of left back is he? Because we know full well that the modern day left back and right back, modern day full backs, one of the most important positions in world football. You've seen that at City and, and Liverpool. They've, they've, full backs were, well, they're nowhere near as important previously as they are now. And City and Liverpool have shown that and shown the importance that Cancelo can have in the season, the importance that Trent can have in the season. We haven't had that Manchester United. We've been operating effectively without fullbacks. And well, Shaw obviously had his, had his decent form, but then he disappeared off the face of the earth last year. But this, I'll be interested to see how this one develops. With Fabrizio Romano saying that Manchester United are trying to hijack, despite the fact that, that Leon had that full verbal agreement, United are going in full steam. With reports from Holland saying it's further than that, Man United have already reached that agreement for, with Feyenoord. It's down to the player himself. Let's see what happens here and what Tyrell Malassia chooses. You let me know what you think in the comments below. And actually, let me know how to pronounce his name. I'm going to go for Malassia. I'm sure I'm getting that right. But do you think that'll be a good signing? 15 million there or thereabouts. 
Good signing. Should we be spending it elsewhere? What do you think about it? You let me know in the comments below and I'll do some more research on him and maybe try and bring you a scouting report on him because it looks like we're in for him. Transfers. Looks like they're happening. Finally.